It's been a long time coming. Uh, there have been 16 different pieces of legislation over the last 27 years in South Australia that have not passed our parliament. And today, finally, after laws passed in 2021, uh, we'll see voluntary assisted dying laws come into operation today, which will mean that people suffering a terminal illness at the end of their life will now have a ch chance to um, die with the sort of dignity in which they live their lives in South Australia. What are some of the thresholds involved here? Yeah, we modelled our laws on Victoria, which became the first state in 2019 to have a voluntary assisted dying scheme. Uh, there are some 70 different uh, safeguards in our scheme. Uh, to qualify, you have to have two doctors both sign off that you're in the last six months of your life or 12 months for a, a neurodegenerative condition uh, and that you're suffering a terminal illness and uh, you've got to uh, attest that you're in uh, intolerable pain. So there are many, many safeguards in place and, uh, and people from today in South Australia can uh, access, and, uh, access the Care Navigator service that gives all that information. So many people are advocating for this change. Do you know uh, if there's a, a solid list or a queue of people who've been waiting for today to start the process on their own behalf, on behalf of a loved one? Yeah, absolutely. Over the last few years, I've had many, many South Australians contact me. Um, people who themselves are suffering a terminal illness and, uh, and people who are family members as though suffering a terminal illness. Um, yeah, sadly, a number of those who would have used this scheme over the last couple of years have passed away, but yeah, there are people who have been waiting for today to come and uh, this scheme to come into operation. And the experience from other states is there's not a huge uh, um, pent up demand, but you know, slowly people apply for the scheme and people qualify for the scheme and, uh, and avail themselves to it. We had uh, Liz Haberman on the show earlier. You, you'd know Liz very well. Uh, for those just tuning in, Liz uh, lost her son Reese. He had terminal bone cancer four years ago. Reese decided to, to end his life, of course, before these laws came into effect. And they went through a lot of unnecessary grief and trauma, police investigations and the like. So, so clearly you would see these laws as being something to stop an experience the Haberman family has had to go through and it will live with them for the rest of their lives. Yeah, absolutely, Michael. And, and Liz was one of the people that I spent a lot of time on the phone with as we were developing these laws in South Australia. And uh, Liz became a, a great advocate to make sure others didn't suffer what her family went through. And I think Liz herself uh, you know, drove the six or seven hours from her home in Woodner in regional SA and you know, watched every bit of the parliamentary debate as this was going through Parliament. And, uh, and you know, I pay a great deal of tribute to people like Liz who are turning what is a, a family tragedy and into campaigning to make sure these laws have come to fruition and others won't have to suffer in that same way.